Hey, welcome to Exchange. Let's look at the airline industry, specifically American Airlines. I know across the board, they've been all been increasing in March, April time frame, which really counterintuitive with oil increases, but really this summer makes me an absolute blowout summer. Let's look at what could happen potentially for American Airlines going forward. So this is their Q1 2022 earnings uh, came out a few days ago. So actually the investor presentation, the little pull out here is really slide four. So slide four, uh, total revenue beat expectations by more than $500 million. So I mean, revenue and demand right now is absolutely sky high. And in summer is peak travel season too. So that revenue should maintain a high base across the board. Um, but really, look at bolt number three here. So highest absolute daily bookings and cash intake in company history in the month of March. So really what you see right now is this huge supply demand imbalance. Everyone's like, hey, I want to go travel summer. It's post COVID, post mass mandate. Let's get out there. What, what vacation spots or not, or go, or go see grandmas of different cities, et cetera. I mean, it's going to be a very, very hot travel season. I mean, and the airlines already know this too. And even the bookings right now are, are basically reflecting that fact. So this is really the, basically the recovery timeline, basically broken down by the various kind of types of itineraries or types of routes are flying. So, so domestic leisure they're saying is almost all recovered capacity is there. The constraints aren't quite there as bad as they were before. There's some constraints in the regional airlines, basically like they're small, small jets. There's some constraints there, about, about 85% or so of capacity, but the actual true, like, you know, the main, like American Delta United, kind of the mainline carriers, they're basically almost hundred percent recovered. Minus a couple like different, you know, skews of jets, basically like the 787, for example, is being out of, um, basically out of capacity right now. Uh, Short Haul International is there too. So like 737 Maxes, kind of the long haul narrow body jets are basically recovered. Domestic business is it's recovering. It's not quite there yet, which this is bad for American and most airlines too, because typically business class customers, is, it's usually higher margins. They fly last minute notice trips. They're flying, they're paying the premiums. Companies are paying the premiums. They're flying, you know, they're basically flying the premium or the first class kind of, you know, basically overall seats. So I mean, it's really highly profitable for the airlines in general. Now, Long Haul International, these are kind of both business and leisure travelers. These are very profitable too. But the problem is right now, it's just not quite there yet with the COVID restrictions and everything else too. But this might come back this late summer, potentially this fall time frame too, but it's not quite recovered quite yet. So something to look at versus American versus its peers. So American, by, you know, this is a well-known fact, but has the most debt load of any airline. That's why it has all sorts of highest volatility, but it also has the youngest fleet overall. So looking at the actual, you know, American versus Delta versus United, I mean, American from zero to 10 years of age or fleet age, you know, 55% of basically their fleet itself, 10 to 20 years, um, they're actually at 19%. They're actually being beat by United right now. And then obviously 20 years plus, I mean, Delta United are well, well beyond American. So really the short term, it's actually, I mean, it's one of those things they're flying more fuel efficient fleet, a younger fleet, et cetera. But like long term, you're going to see in the Delta United space, they're going to have to make those investments in the future, basically have that future CapEx to buy new planes or lease new plans going forward in the 2020s and beyond, obviously. So this is our second quarter outlook for 2022, basically going from April to uh, June or end of June time frame, so first half of summer. What they're saying right now is for 2019, for two, a second quarter, they're having revenue up six to eight percent for 2019 levels. So that, that right now is a massive increase from the rat in the past two years. So I mean, it's going to be a dramatic jump. Another thing you notice here is looking at the fuel cost. So basically, what they're saying right now is they're going to burn about a million gallons of fuel given their route structure they have right now, assuming no delays or no basically you know massive changes there. Assuming fuel costs are 359 to 364 a gallon, which is a little bit lower than it is right now. Right now it's about three, you know 390 four dollar ish range, which it, it basically peaked up a little bit into April. So this might be a little under assumption there too. So their costs could be a little bit lower than they project overall, but the revenue side might be actually much lower than they're, uh, they're projecting as well too. So we'll, we'll see what happens when they report um, in July time frame. So this is a basically the income statement they have from basically the last three months of, and so this is their last, uh, so March 31st, the last three months. I also put up 2021 and 2019's data as well too. Also, I did a forward projection for Q2 of 2022 based on these numbers where it might end up based on their forward guidance and some of their projections overall. So what you see right here is last quarter they reported about $8.9 billion of revenue. Um, you know, for 2021, it was $4 billion flat. So I mean, this is almost a, literally over a doubling of revenue uh, year over year based on COVID. Obviously, it's no real big surprise. There are also capacity constraints, et cetera. Uh, 2019 levels, basically the baseline they have that most Wall Street investors are comparing it to is this $10.584 billion from 2019 for the first the first Q1 of last year um, or this last uh, last quarter. So I mean, they're about, you know, a little under about 80% or so, about 80% of the total revenue recovery, et cetera, which the majority of this is basically international travel, some of the long haul domestic stuff, et cetera. But really domestically, it's doing pretty well. Really, once international picks in or uh, kicks in this fall, it should be recovered pretty strongly and then beyond, obviously, too. Um, but really looking at here, I mean, the massive increase you see right here is look at this fuel, uh, aircraft fuel related taxes. 
So in, in 2021, it was $1 billion in Q1 for fuel, which obviously fuel was you know pretty much dirt cheap during COVID. Um, last quarter, it was $2.5 billion. So, I mean, it's just a dramatic increase overall across the board. Looking at 2019 levels, I mean, you look at $1.7 million on $10 billion of revenue. So in general, I mean, fuel is roughly 15 to 25% of an airline's fuel costs right now. I mean, right now they're averaging roughly 29, 30% plus, but it's very volatile right now. Because crude oil right now, as you probably know, I mean, it's, it's been very, very volatile across the board the past uh, two months. So looking at the last quarter, I mean, the OPEX expenses are pretty standard. Nothing really crazy given that, you know, wage inflation and everything else too. Some certain costs have gone up, et cetera. But nothing really too out of norm besides the fuel costs. I mean, they're actually a much leaner airline they were than they were basically in 2019, even 2021. I mean, they actually, basically, what happens is they scaled down, cut all the fat out, and as they're scaling up now, they're getting very, very efficient across the board. Um, one thing I did notice here is the, um, is the actual other item here. Other, It's a very odd category. I mean, it's a major uh, OPEX expense line. So last quarter, they spent $1.2 billion or $1.3 billion which, which you can see that right here. I actually broke, I actually went into their 10Q and figured out, hey, what the other kind of, what it actually means. And all I say is other operating expenses increased uh, 569 million to 79.5%. And Q1 of 2022 for the first quarter of 2021, primarily as a result of increased capacity and expenses associated with improving our product offerings, customer experience, and operational reliability. I mean, it's very, very vague. It's almost like a catch all bucket. I mean, for future investments, I would definitely be careful, make sure it doesn't increase too much. I mean, it's pretty, pretty standard across the board. Um, I mean, it could be like new proof of concepts, new, new IT like kind of offerings, new AI stuff they're doing behind the scenes. I mean, basically, it's a, kind of a catch-all bucket for any kind of odd expenses they might have. I mean, for an other bucket, though, it's a pretty massive one given everything else. And they probably should break it down basically by subcategories so we can actually know, hey, what they're actually investing in going forward and whether it's going to be profitable or not profitable uh, for the airline at scale. Hey, so finally, I broke down the uh, Q2, my Q2 projections. So what they're saying is basically a 6 to 8% increase of revenue over 2019 levels. So it's basically saying $11.3 billion, which I mean, looking at the like Q1, even, you know, it's just a massive increase. You're talking like, you know, was it 30, 40% right there? I mean, it's just a huge numbers potentially. And now the big, the big caveat there is really the fuel costs there. So basically we're saying right now it's 3.95 uh, nine, or 3.9 3 billion dollars of fuel costs across the board. Basically what we're saying there about a million dollars of uh, basic gallons times about you know 390 or so roughly, which that could drop or could go higher potentially. I mean fuel volatility right now is absolutely extreme. And American Airlines, they do not hedge. The only airline that actually hedges their fuel costs is Southwest Airlines. Well, there's pros and cons there. I mean, the pros are if you hedge and if price goes up, obviously to the moon, then you're hedged against that. But the, really the cost, that really last decade or so, fuel's been pretty low and pretty not volatile. So that really hedging costs are just wasted, basically wasted expenses for most of the airlines the past 10 years, which, I mean, they might be regretting that now. They're looking at potentially hedging the future, but again, that may be a long-term play. But for short-term at least, they're going to eat that cost, at least in Q2 and Q3 of this year. Um, every other cost, I mean, it's pretty standard, you know, salary increases, like, you know, operational expense increases with the airline capacity growing, et cetera. Um, the, the fleet impairments here, that's actually should go away. That was from Q1 with some A330s, which is basically a type of airplane, wide body aircraft that were impaired. Um, basically, they basically uh, took that write off uh, back in Q1. There should be no write offs this quarter, but if they are, they're going to be pretty small. Like, we're talking like, you know, $100 million plus potentially, not, nothing too, too crazy for the size of the airline itself. Um, I'm assuming the other bucket right here, which is a little bit odd. I'm assuming 1400 uh, 1400 or, or $1.4 billion there, uh, which it might be high, might be low, but it's probably somewhere in that ballpark. But are looking at here, like total OPEX, uh, $12 billion, which obviously you're looking at, hey, revenues of 11.3, you know, you're basically burning uh, 12.3. Obviously, you're underwater there by a billion dollars. It sounds really, really bad. But look at like Q1. I mean, they burned $1.7 billion. Look at look at 2021. They burned $1.3 billion. And this is assuming crazy high fuel. So really what happens right now, you have high demand, high uh, revenues across the board. Now, if the fuel were to drop, all of a sudden the profit margin just widens out dramatically. Because if someone buys a flight right now for, let's say, July, I mean, the, 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 you're basically, what, what that, that cost for you is already sunk. So if the, pro, the fuel drops at all, it's just more profit for the airline itself to fly you from point A to point B. So looking at this data, I mean, basically we're saying across the board, across all the airlines, I think this makes sense for an airline trade for the summer. It's going to be hot, and I think the question is how high is it going to go? But really the big question we also have to ask, too, is like, hey, fuel costs. How bad is it going to be? I mean, if it's stable right now, I mean, it's basically stabilized level around you know, $100 crude or so. I mean, that's not terrible. It's not great for the airlines. Uh, but they, just should, they should still do very, very well given on, you know, demands very, very high. Also, ticket revenue is going to be very, very high this summer, too, both for Q2 and Q3 for, for all the airlines. Now, for, like, volatility, looking at all the airlines, 
Uh, Americans are usually the highest at 1.5 beta, which basically means for uh, every percent of the market increases, increases 1.5%. Uh, Delta and United are both about 1.3. So for every 1% increase, it'll increase by 1.3%. The flat rate, the flattest one across the board or most stable is actually Southwest because they fuel hedge, et cetera. There's not as much actually volatility there in the actual, uh, basically like their, their you know, day-to-day -day basically fluctuations with the market itself. Uh, one other thing I would be careful about with the Spirit Airlines, if you're going to invest there, they have recent buyout news, uh, whether it's going to be front here or it's going to be a uh, jet blue but they're basically their price is almost capped right now about 27 dollars maybe 33 potentially if it goes to jet blue route um, another thing to be careful about too is alaska airlines they actually might have a strike potentially in may so definitely be careful of that too the union should vote on that next uh next month but it might happen too and they have a strike it'll be basically bad news for the stock overall so just be careful about that but really i think the big three like united delta american and south or southwest too are kind of your big four you want to go after if you're going to invest in the airlines and all overall but i mean the one thing is industry overall should flock together so as one's profitable the other one should follow suit now there could be market share changes across the board but i think overall the you know just a big case the macro level and if it makes sense for the summer trade for airlines hey but yeah this is a trade i'm definitely gonna follow this summer but yeah be sure to like comment and sub down below and um yep that's the exchange